Hey, we're all getting ready to go down there. Tell Sammy to go with you. Hey, where'd Cala go? Oh, yeah, you'll see, oh, yeah, see him here first. You guys care if I pull? I'm gonna pull him off the track. Pulling him off the track. Hey, he's already two laps down. You might as hey. well pull him off the track, then go to the truck and have a sandwich. <laughs> Do you think Sky is going to win? Hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. These are the show for us. for these guys. All right, Adrian. Give him a sign. You guys give him a yes or no if you're ready to go. Ten seconds. Go! Oh, wow. 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 Who's gonna win this one? Oh. Oh, look at that guy. He's got fenders. Who's gonna win this one? I guessed him in the formula. Oh, yeah. He's got a sick looking formula. Uh oh, we got a late. Oh, we got a battle here. Ready to go? The top two are close, guys. We gotta keep an eye on this one. Like your other one. Put your arm in. Put your arm through. There you Whoa. go. Look at that. <laughs> and Elsa and Anna. Oh. She gets presents. She gets presents everywhere. All right. Take them out of your pocket so you put them in your purse. Very confused. Is that your trailer over there? That's no, that's mine. That's T. 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 So kicking off on Sunday morning, really nice weather this weekend, pretty good temps for this early in the morning. You can see uh, Brody and Doc going at it there in the super mini class. Doc making it to the woods first. I think that was Levi Fortune there in third. But typically this early in the season, it's still really cold in the morning, so a lot of these kids wearing hoodies. But uh, today was really nice, really nice weekend all together. The girls class taking off here. Didn't really get to fly the drone very much this weekend just because of how windy it got during the day. You can kind of see that flag already starting to pick up early in the morning. I try, I tend to not fly the drone, even though I think it could probably handle it. But once you get up into the 30 mile an hour winds, um, that's kind of the top speed on this particular drone. And if it starts getting carried away, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, you can try to go down closer to the ground and, some guys will probably say that <clears throat> it's fine to fly a drone in this this uh, types and conditions, but I just always play it safe. But uh, 85 Junior class taking off here. I think that's Charlie Holland out front. The other thing I wish this uh, drone had was audio. It's real quiet with the uh, when the drone takes off 65 class taking off here I believe that's trip Hicks that got out in front chase Wilkerson got him to the second corner there and I think that's Deegan there in third and then Ryder was coming through there in fourth Cooper kind of shoveled back to sixth or eighth there 
Then I swooped back over and got the trail rider class as they were going into the woods. But again, awesome weekend for weather wise. This is the first time we've, I think this is the first time we've been at this piece of property without either one or two of the days being complete rain out, mutters, um, just miserable conditions. But I think this might be Amber's shot from right as they're going into the woods there. And then we cut back to one of the open field sections. This is right as they're getting, uh, I think there's about a mile left in the course right here. Goes Brody coming through. I think that was Starnes that just went through. Really fast section here with a kind of a little jump. You'll see later, um, Adrian got some footage of a kid swapping pretty good there. Eli Poe, here comes Ryder. Uh, we actually saw the leaders, I think twice or maybe even three times before we saw really very many 65s. You can watch Cooper's GoPro and see that there was quite a big bottleneck back there in a ravine that the course guys were just trying to get everybody through. I think this is my shot. This is the last few corners, the little pit bike track leading up to the finish line. Four little whoop sections there. I think this is my shot of Ryder, and that's, I believe that's the first time we saw them since they went through, since they took off on the starting line. We really hadn't seen them. We knew they were all stuck somewhere, but didn't really know where. This is the first time we've really ever ridden here when it was dry. Every race here has been a mutter. But um, Cooper is way back, not sure what happened yet. And before the race, I opened his gas can. I totally forgot to put even gas in his bike. Being so close, we didn't even. Hi, this vlogging. And it's like 20 mile an hour winds today. So the canopies are not happy. I forgot to put gas in Cooper's bike. We didn't even bring a gas can close to home, we typically don't. So I had to run and borrow gas from Dustin. Luckily got Cooper's bike filled up, but hey, we're making laps now, so, and it's nice out. So as you can see here, I took some of uh, Cooper's helmet cam footage through it into the vlog here. Kind of way back in there, Cooper got stuck on a log and then Doc ended up getting stuck on it too. Cooper sat there, cruised, scrolled through for about two minutes is all he really had to wait, but Thankfully, this parent was uh, back there and she was able to get his bike off those logs. Um, who knows how long he would have sat there. So shout out to the, all the parents out there, <clears throat> especially this one that uh, gets way back in the woods and, and helps all the riders back there that uh, get stuck. The 65 class, in, when they step up from intermediate to youth, I feel is, is uh, a little bit more challenging because the tracks are significantly longer so there's a lot of the track that the parents and the course workers can't get to so if they get stuck on a log or get stuck they're just kind of there until a course worker can make a lap and catch them or if by chance there's a parent that decided to go way out and try to find a hard spot and just kind of camp out there and make sure everybody gets through it so definitely uh, cool to see the parents back there if you're one of these parents that kind of goes out and tries to find a hard spot and make sure all the kids are making it. Um, props to you. <clears throat> so this is a little section here where the course kind of um, crosses itself pretty close. This is right after the first pro hill. They kind of go down this long straightaway and they make another big couple three mile loop, maybe a couple, couple mile loop. And then they come back on the other side of the track here. So it's a good spot right here where I can catch riders going both ways. Again, I'm not very good at uh, keeping things in chronological order for the video, especially when I'm bouncing back and forth between my footage, Jeff's footage, Adrian's footage, Amber's footage. Here uh, you can see Sam and I believe that's Lintz kind of battling. I think there was still two to go at this time, but they were uh, going back and forth quite a bit on this little pit bike track right before the finish line. It was cool to watch.
And then here's uh, Deegan going through the rollers before the finish line. Still think there was two to go here. I think Deegan, oh, white flag actually on this one. Deegan was, ended up finishing third. I think he was in third most of the race. Eli Poe coming through the rollers. I think this is all my footage just kind of camped out here till the end of the race. I think this might be Adrian's stuff kind of farther back in the woods. I believe this is Jeff in the far back corner of the field, and that's Levi. He was out front in the overall. <clears throat> Brody Amos coming through. I'm trying to keep track of them, too. I know they went back and forth a little bit. Brody ended up hitting a tree, bending his shift lever back, and I think he was stuck in first gear for a while, which held him up. Then right here, Cooper. <clears throat> this is the uh, last lap. Cooper ended up going for one of the Pro Hills. So, it's kind of proud of him for trying it at least. He kind of bobbled at the top, but everybody kind of got him going, and he made up a little time on the last lap here. But overall, Cooper ran really good after the first lap. Uh, the first lap was definitely the longest and hardest. He got stuck in that ravine. He got stuck on the log. I know some of these other kids were getting getting stuck in certain spots and just having to wait for somebody to help them out. But once uh, the track crew got all the bad spots kind of figured out, out of the way, uh, these guys were able to just put some laps in and get more consistent with their lap times. And I was back to the finish line here. This is Levi coming through to get the checkered flag. Then you can see Brody here, you can kind of hear his engine revving out. He can't go that fast. Doc was actually catching him pretty good on that last lap. And then you can see Jacob Volan was right on uh, right on Doc there towards the end. So really good battle between those two all the way down to the checkered flag with Doc getting that last podium position. Then this is uh, Chase Wilkerson. He ended up winning the 65 class. Cooper coming through the little roller section for the last time. So I think he ended up uh, finishing in eighth out of 18 or 19. I can't remember uh, exactly how many there were, but um, again, after they got that first lap through and kind of got all the bottlenecks and bad spots figured out. Um, they were able to make some pretty good laps. It's just kind of hard on that first lap getting through everything. And kind of with Cooper being <clears throat> his first year in the youth class, it's going to take him a while to kind of figure out proper line choice because some of that stuff was easily avoidable that he got stuck in. But he's learning and getting stuck like that, I think it's good for you. Here's the thing. We need to know how that was to start with that. How was the race? First lap, they were like trying to remove a lot of stuff. And we got it. There was a huge ravine bottleneck. Like, Dang. No one could even get up the hill. Yeah. And then they cut it off. So I was with your dad about halfway, a little over halfway through, and all of a sudden you were coming like faster yeah. and. Uh, doing a lot better. What changed? Something happened. What changed? The track became easier. And? Like, you might have done something, I think. Maybe the Pro Hill? Yeah. yeah. I did the Pro Hill on the last lap. Ah, so you saved a lot of time on that last lap. Now tell Sammy, Road. Road? Yeah. 
So 65 intermediate, as you can see, is huge turnout for that. Um, I didn't even look at the results to see how many were actually out there, but um, Roxon getting a good start there, and then Jackson Shaft getting a real good start. This is, uh, oh, I think that was 50 senior going through. And then you got the intermediate trail rider class after that. That is Chase Wilkerson out there again. You are um, allowed to run the trail rider class, a non-points class, after you race your points class. So he was out there just getting some seat time. So this is Adrian's footage from the intermediate class and as you can see there that rider catching an edge and flying that was actually his dad that uh, picked him up as soon as he got done rolling there. I guess a uh, little bit sore but uh, nothing uh, broken from what I heard and, and he ended up being okay. I was down on the starting line so this is kind of down after the finish line where the uh, track kind of feeds back in around the start. And that was Roxon going through. Again, as you can see, the dirt was uh, pretty awesome for most of the track, but there were definitely soft spots everywhere. Jackson Shaft coming through here. It was really cool to see um, more and more you've seen a lot of uh, girls out there racing um, that's really cool for uh, oh, hi, guy. Oh, hi, guy. you know I know uh, Weston Ray's got two of his girls racing probably have more racing as soon as they get old enough but really cool to see all the girls out there what are you doing So here we go on the AM adult race. I uh, want to say 340 uh, was the total sign up for this race. So really good turnout for this piece of property. Again, like I said, most of these races at this property have been super dry or super muddy. So this one being right here close to Martinsville usually gets a really good turnout anytime there's a race around Martinsville. Just a lot of racers around here. But um, one of the driest races we've had here at Lee Farms in a while. This is uh, 150 BC, Bryce. I told him to line up farther to the inside, and he said, no, no, I'll sweep around the outside. And Well, he kind of got bunched up. I think I counted it. I think he went in the woods 12th. So, again, I was trying to just talk him into going a little bit farther inside, but he didn't want to. He ended up making his way a little bit farther up quicker than I thought. I believe this is open C taken off here. Stacked rows, you know, 20, 30. I think sometimes 40 riders in each one of these classes in this uh, AM race. So a lot of bikes on this track today. I think this was open D. I went and kind of grabbed a, a shot of from the side there. I think they were lined up all the way from edge to edge on the starting line. Jeff Ford, uh, he was out front. We jumped on the Zuma and tried to get all the way to the back property to try to catch him going through. Just barely missed him. Jake Scott coming through. He was running that Sportsman AB class. Taylor Taylor in the women's class. Doing pretty good. So some of the 150 BCs. Gavin Carmen, uh, Grayson Fisher coming through. Before that, um, before that you can see Gavin Bird coming through, but 
couple shots of Bryce. He was right up there in the mix. Uh, Amber and I were back here kind of waiting for him to come through uh, around. This would be on the top side of the second pro hill. Zach Ray coming through, Shane Ankney. Um, then uh, Amber's phone started ringing, and uh, one of our friends said they had Bryce scooped up in the uh, in their golf cart and took him back to the RV. Got tangled up with a lapper and went over the bars real hard and, and uh, just uh, thought he better call today. Wasn't wasn't too bad hurt but just uh, wasn't sure so he called it a day early um, it's kind of unfortunate it was a really fun track he was doing really good but just got tangled up with a lapper and it was really cool um, the lapper actually uh, messaged me on Facebook and was apologizing for causing Bryce to crash but just a racing incident it happens all the time there were a lot of bikes on this track and you know the front running guys were running into lappers fairly early in the race and racing for 90 minutes on uh i don't i can't remember how many miles they said this track was uh five or six miles but you're just going to run into that uh obviously this is some of jeff's footage didn't uh didn't get things quite in order just because you saw bryce go by but um i think bryce maybe only did two laps before he uh, crashed and ended up going back to the RV. But I went back, checked on him, and then I came back down here. This would be the second pro hill before they start doing the loop on the other side of the property. As you can see, the IXCR crew does a lot of work uh, getting the skids down there. This, this pro hill would be pretty much impassable without those bridges that they put in. The ravines at this property are really soft and if they had to go through that wet ravine before trying to climb that hill, there I mean, you'd probably get 10 or 20 bikes through there and then it would be so blown out you wouldn't even be able to climb that hill. So putting that bridge in down there takes a lot of time, but it allows everybody to hit that. I mean, who knows how many times that, that hill was hit during the weekend. They had almost 1100 entries on the weekend so am quads pm quads youth both you know everybody's hitting that thing for how many laps and that bridge held up pretty good so good job for those guys all right jack how far how far are you gonna jump over this one at least up there I got that nice curve. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. All right, so here we go on the PM race. This is Jeff shot from behind the pro start, and you can see uh, Peyton Harden there timing that just about as good as one could followed by matt sims and then i think that was jack joy right there in third going into the woods and then cut back to jeff with a side shot of the open a class i think uh possibly mcneil getting the jump there but uh alec would go into the woods first followed by van and I know none of y'all, you know, obviously I edit this through, but uh, I just recorded this whole PM um, audio, got done with it, loved it, loved every part of it, realized I forgot to hit record. So this is my second take on the PM race. Uh, these are Sammy shots from, uh, that was Van going around the, towards the finish line doing his first lap, and then she came down to, this would be the first of the two Pro Hills, Mike going through, Buddy going through, and then Matt. Here's Van tossing off his goggles, then going up, catching some decent air on this one. Martin coming through, he's running open A, running pretty good. Ethan Purdy, I think he's running B lights, I could be wrong on that. But Sammy stayed here for a couple laps, watched Van do uh, a couple laps through this section, and then uh, jumped back over here to 
Jeff, this is down by the entrance to the property, actually. I thought you died. Yeah, I did. Oh, there's Matt. And then Jeff uh, moved all the yeah, way towards the back. This is uh, a little bit of a stretch of woods as you curve around and go towards the second pro hill. Kind of like the way this track is laid out because you could um, be in one spot. If you're trying to chase just one rider and keep an eye on yours, you could really see him multiple times per lap if you timed it out right. So there's Van coming up the second of the two pro hills. I cut back to some of my footage. This is earlier in the race. Matt and Daniel coming through, followed by Jack. I think that was third, fourth, and fifth at the time. Teddy Mullins, Eric Douglas. Um, I, actually, that was Lee, that was Buddy back there behind um, behind Eric Douglas. So he had some time to make up coming through there. Jack Joy airing out the Pro Hill. Clearing past that stump. That stump was kind of brutal. A lot of guys landed right on that on their cases. Um, There's no suspension there, so that had to feel good on the ankles. Mario Tonchev coming through, staying pretty close to Van on the first lap. I jumped out into this field, which this section's all the way in the back, but probably within a mile of the finish line. Matt running third. I think that was Jack. Daniel Sims. I think that was Anthony Wagler, actually, right there in front of Teddy Mullins. Lance Machino coming out. Haven't seen him out here much this year, so it's good to see him out racing. Matthew Bell. And actually, that was Anthony Wagler right there behind Matt Bell. Van coming through leading that uh, open A class, and Mario not too far behind him. A little bit too high of a gear right here. Trying to get that KTM going. Our buddy Ryan Frederick, I think he ran Vet B. Then Wyskowski coming up. Yeah, I can't, ah, uh, this was the first of the two pro hills. Then I jumped over, this is about a mile into the woods. This would be just straight up the hill after the start. So they go through the check flag checkers and then come down here, Van, uh, chasing Hudson Taylor down there. Back over in this section of the woods right here, um, Buddy was actually, I thought maybe I'd missed Wachowski going through, but uh, then I saw Wachowski come through. So. I'm not sure what lap this was, but for a little bit, um, Buddy was uh, ahead of Wachowski. I don't know if Wachowski had to pit, and uh, Buddy got around him for a little bit, but um, Fortune was leading the race there for a while. Coming through, this is uh, Wachowski tripling into that little roller section. Hayden McCreary, this is a little tight section of woods just right before they pop out onto that little motocross track. Mario coming through, Lane Smith, he kind of got buried mud hole on the first lap within the first mile and he was playing catch up the whole day but really rode great after, um, after he kind of got out of the mud. I'm not sure if he used up a bunch of energy trying to get out but um, he was playing catch up all day. Kenton Coleman, uh, all the way back in this back section. This is uh, Adrian's footage. Where are you, Van Michael? Again, I have no idea what point in the race this is. It's really hard to keep all this stuff chronologically in order. But um, really good weekend. Uh, temperatures were awesome. Probably a little bit on the hot side. A lot of people getting sunburnt. Definitely could have gone without all the wind that was uh, whipping around everywhere, making everybody's canopies take flight and all that stuff. But we'll take this over a mutter any day. But um, I think Wachowski ended up with a win. Um, Buddy Fortune was second, and then Matt Sims ended up third. Then Van uh, Van got the win in open A again and with sixth overall in the top amateur, which is really cool because uh, I think there were 19 pros on the front row. So again, um, Thanks again for everybody watching. Trying to keep these interesting. Um, they're getting kind of long, but 
have uh, Stony Lonesome coming up this weekend. And then GNCC comes to town, so we'll be up at the Hoosier. And then we're back at an IXCR the following weekend. So very busy couple weeks here with racing, but uh, having a good time. And thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in about a week.